Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Lake Bluff School District 65 Board of Education regular meeting for January 24th, 2017. Can we have a roll call, please? Mark Berry. Present. John Morrison. Present. Uh, Leon Charlo, absent. Julie Gottschall, present. Richard Hegg, absent. Philip Butts. Present. Susan Ryder. Present. Great. So we have five. We've got a quorum. We can begin. And we will start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. So everybody join. Stand and join me. We'll move on to the opportunity for public comment. If anybody would like to address the board, please do not hesitate to do so. Step up to the podium. Not seeing anybody, we'll move on to offering the board the opportunity to add a discussion item or a future agenda item. If anybody wants to raise something they want to make sure we cover either tonight or in the future, please let us know. Or if you think of something between meetings, email Gene or I, and we can make sure it gets discussed in the future. Moving on. Uh, we now move on to our recognition segment of the evening where we get to talk to a future superintendent of schools who recently spent the day with Dr. Sophie. And I turn this over to Dr. Sophie and her superintendent protege. Well, good evening, everybody. I am so pleased to introduce Carly Weston. She's a third grader at Lake Bluff Elementary School, and she was superintendent for the, for the day with Dr. Sophie. So I know Dr. Sophie and Carly have a lot to share about the excitement that they did, that they had on that special day. Good, at, good evening, I was gonna say good afternoon. This young lady is a future superintendent. We had a great time at, on our superintendent for the day, and you brought your friend, Nora. So what I told Carly, I'm gonna have her talk a little bit, but I'm gonna run you through kind of some of the pictures from the day so that you can see them. Uh, they started, do you wanna do this part? Or do you want me to, and then you can talk about your notes. Do you want me to just run through these or do you want to do yours first? You decide, because you're a decision maker. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to run through this really quick and then she's going to give her summary of the day. But she started the morning with the board president, who better than the board president, to find out about all of the things we do. And then she met with Tracy Rorick, who's the assistant principal at the elementary school. Then we went on to Village Hall, where they learned about all the laws behind you and they met with Drew, who was very animated, and Kathy O'Hara, um, and they learned a lot about village ordinances and laws and things like that. Remember that piece? Okay. And what I tried to do with our superintendents is give them just a snapshot of all the different people that a superintendent meets with during the day. Um, of course, one of their favorite pieces of the day was going to Panera. Uh, then we went over to visit our friend, Mr. Mike Semek, over at Lake Forest. And he showed them parts of the West Campus I had never seen, so she may tell you a little bit about that. <laughs> then we went to go visit Dr. Holland, the principal over at Lake Forest High School, who I have to tell you, she's pretty awesome, isn't she? All right, then we went um, and visited, I forgot to get a picture of Mr. Blackmore with the girls, but he was already giving a tour, so the girls got to go in on the tour of the, with the other people of the new building. Then they met with Jay Khan. <laughs> then they met with Kevin, who informed them that he was the director of everything. <laughs> and um, I did ask them later on in the day, you know, what do you guys think? Because the next thing they had paperwork to do. They signed off on all the teacher tuition reimbursements, which she may talk to you about. And I said, so what do you think the least part of favorite part of your day would be? And they said. Um, all the signing, but it's a good thing that I have Dr. Rubenstein because he's the director of everything. <laughs> and he said he does everything I don't want to do. That's what he told me. They had cookies. They liked that part of the day, too. So, And then we returned back to LBES, and we just had a great day. So I'm going to turn it over to our superintendent for the day. Do you want me to hold this for you? And we'll look right at them. <laughs> Hello, my name is Carly Weston, and I am in third grade at LBS. 
I wanted to be a superintendent for the day at Pumpkin Fest and I got to bring my friend Nora. Mm -hmm. My favorite part of the day was meeting the superintendent of the high school because she was really nice and showed us the gymnastics room there. Mm -hmm. Sometime, something funny that happened that day was that I went into the bathroom near Dr. Sophie's office and found someone's cell phone in there. Thank goodness Mrs. Goff. Goff. Thank good where are you? Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Mrs. Goff, that's and that's her right there. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Goff, remember her? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Goff. Goff was there to help. I just wanted to thank Mark, Barry, Mrs. Mr. Irvin, Mrs. Goff, Dr. Holland, Mr. Blackmer, Mr. Rubensey, Mr. Slimmick, Mrs. St. Clair, and especially Dr. Sophie for such a great day. Thank you, and we had so much fun. We did have so much fun. <laughs> Whenever someone presents to the board, you always have to say so. Ask them if they have any questions. Do you have any questions? Come on, John. Who's got a question? Yeah, I, a question. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm really impressed. I have a granddaughter exactly your age, and she told me today she made the honor roll, got straight A, so I know exactly what she's going through, and I, and I want to say you did a great job. You did. Yeah. And if you notice, because all of you have these, they all oh. got their booklets, and they both took fervent notes during the day. So they documented their visit and they really did have a great day. They got to see a, just a snapshot of all the people in the community that we meet with. So it was fun. I hope you win it again next year. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. if you want, but if you don't want to stay, we totally get it. <laughs> um, we're going to move on to the report section of our agenda and begin with uh, Mrs. St. Clair with an elementary school. <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and Happy New Year. I think we can still say that. So um, we wanted to report out um, a little bit on our attendance and absences and tardies and then share a piece of good news with you um, too from our schools. So um, absence and tardies, Kevin ran reports for our schools for this time last year. Our absences have improved by about 5%, so we're happy about that. Um, we do still have um, a large number of absences in um, our school population that are for a variety of reasons. So oftentimes we run the report and then I really talk with our school secretary and our nurse to really narrow down which ones are for illness and vacation and things like that. So we're glad there has been an improvement and we're continuing to be active in communicating with families. Um, tardies have remained about the same if not increased a little bit mm -hmm. and um, we do have about, um, I my report was um, any students who had six or more tardies, which is beyond what we expect. That's around when we start communicating with families. So at this point in the year, we have about 35 to 40 students who have more than five tardies. So um, we just continue to communicate and um, we'll continue to do that. So we wanted to just update on that and Nate will be doing the same. Um, one thing that Tracy Rourke and I are doing this year just to kind of promote some positive communication with families is um, teachers are recognizing students for showing pause behavior. We have our little acronym for um, character and then the students bring their postcards down to the office and either Tracy or I call home with the good news with their families. So we have made about 120 phone calls since 
um, like October and it's really fun. Today we had five kids come in from one class and they bring their postcards and it's really nice to be able to call families with um, good news and they always get to talk to their children who are standing right there with us and um, that's just one way that we are trying to. So the parents um, don't know that call's coming? Correct. Oh, so they, probably pack they do. I say yeah. immediately, I have learned. I say, this is Margaret St. Clair from Lake Bluff Elementary School. I'm calling for a great reason. I say that all in one breath because they get kind of nervous when they get a phone call from the principal. Um, some of the older kids, they want to wait and tell one parent or the other when they get home and say, I had to go to the principal's today and then show their postcard. So that is something positive that we're trying to do at the school just to. Um, improve communication. That's Any cool. questions? Good idea. No. Thanks. Thanks. So now we'll have uh, Mr. Blackburn, the principal at the middle school. Good evening. Um, similarly, I took a look at uh, attendance uh, this year as compared to last year, looking at the first 60 days of school this year as compared to the first 60 days of school last year. Uh, please report that uh, the, the rate of attendance has uh, decreased, the rate of absence, excuse me, has decreased by 5%. So we're doing a little bit better this year than we were last. Uh, looking more closely at tardies, however, uh, that's a number that has increased as compared to last year uh, to about 35% more. So we're uh, going to be wow. spending some time talking with our families and uh, kids about that. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit deceiving when you look and recognize that um, that number can be greatly influenced by a small number of kids who maybe are frequently tardy. So um, there are definitely a, a, some students who we're going to be working more closely with to hopefully improve that. Um, in terms of some good things and things to look forward to, I wanted to mention and actually thank our community. Uh, we had put out a uh, request for um, anyone who was willing to come and speak with our students. Next Thursday, we're going to be doing a career exploration day. Um, and initially, response was sort of slow, and then all of a sudden, we got inundated, and now we're at a point where we're having to turn folks away. So thank you, thank you very, very much for responding. Uh, we have a wide variety of careers that are going to be uh, discussed with our students. They're going to have a, a, a way to select those that they're most interested in. Uh, everything from attorneys to doctors to FBI agents to security specialists, wow. the Disney company. There's um, just kind of a neat, uh, a neat selection. So we're uh, looking forward to that next Thursday. Any chance of any of that getting put up on your guys' website? That might be an interesting thing to have on the website. Definitely. Uh, I'll make a point of uh, photographing and documenting. Uh, I'll reach out to Jill Cook. Perhaps she'd be available to come and uh, help us with that. She helped us with the publication. And so as soon as that hit the uh, the local, uh, some of the local papers and, uh, and websites, that was one thing. That's when we got everybody to start volunteering. Yeah, yeah. So. so. The question of tardiness, how are parents alerted when their kids are late to school? Um, well, there's a combination of ways. So frequently, if the child is arriving not by bus or walking, they're required to be signed in by the parent. So um, often it's a conversation that I might have at that time if it's excessive. Um, phone calls if they're beyond, and, and we have those thresholds that we talked about before, six being sort of the magic number, 12 being the next. Um, and there's letters that connect, that accompany that. So those are going to be sent home, and I know that and I have talked about the next round uh, needing to go out as we check in um, on those uh, reasons for students being late or half day. So we delineate between a, a late and a tardy based on how much how, how late they are each day. And in our school, due to the age of the students, they they're taking the bus or being dropped off. So they too, if they're late, they need to be signed in. So um, the parents are already aware that they're late. Thank you both. Thank you. Great, thanks. Uh, now we're gonna have a PTO report and Eva Rice from PTO. Hello, good evening. Um, we just have a few updates that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, so the exciting news, we received a $10,000 anonymous um, donation wow. to the LBMS PTO. Wow. And we're hoping for a 100% corporate match for that donation and uh, we'd like that to fund another steam pod that is about, I think, five to six seats, if I'm, six stations. Um, so we're moving forward with that. We're hoping that that will go into place maybe next fall, I think is what we heard. Um, so that was really exciting news. Mm -hmm. um, we also, PTO is purchasing a top shed that we'll use for storage. Um, it's going to be about 
10 by 14 in size, 10 feet by 14 feet in size, and it will be placed next to the LBMS storage shed, um, the South by the parking lot. The new one. The new one. Um, so that will be about, uh, you know, after we purchase it and get it installed and painted, about $3,000. Um, but we think, you know, over the course of many, many years, that will be um, a great way to, you know, not have to go to Metro Storage, and Metro Storage was costing a lot of money at the end. So this was uh, a vote that we all decided on. So hopefully once uh, we pull the permit and get all of that approved, it'll be about two to three, three weeks lead time. Um, another update is we recently had moved to another photography school photography company. We tried Stuart Rogers and we had a lot of complaints from parents and I think some of the admins were having a hard time using them. So we'll go back to Ed Clark Photography. Um, we're going to sign a contract with them soon and hoping that that kind of will smooth over all the school picture complaints <laughs> that we've been hearing. Um, our Recycle and Compost program has kicked off at Lake Bluff Middle School. That was about uh, last week or two weeks ago. I think kids are responding well. We have our sixth graders who were familiar with the program from last year being at LBES there. So it'll take some time, but we're hoping that um, they get a hang of it. Um, after our next LBES meeting, we are having a coffee with Dr. Sophie which we're really looking forward to. We're hoping parents will show up, ask questions, really get to know her on a more personal level. Um, so I think that that's you know, really something that we should maybe consider doing at LBMS someday if, if parents have the questions and just want to get to know her or spend the whole day with her. I'll take you to Panera. Yeah, <laughs> and cookies. Curriculum Enhancement, uh, we have an online social media speaker coming in the spring to meet with kids at LBMS. And I know um, we're hoping to get some fourth and fifth graders, or all the fourth and fifth graders in there as well. And I think this is a really dynamic speaker who will meet with our kids in our community and really talk to them about what they're viewing online on their cell phones and um, on the internet. And then really talk to them about how to use social media, how to use it correctly, um, etiquette, cyberbullying, all of that. So we're really looking forward to her coming and we'll have a date soon. Um, this week we have a BMX motivational speaker at LBES. He'll talk about helmet safety. He's a motivational speaker that I think has um, been there before and he's pretty popular. So that was another, um, another one under curricular enhancement. And then also my last update, Spiritwear is now available at Hub & Cycle, which is a store up here in town. So um, Lake Bluff, LBES, LBMS, whatever is, um, you know, anyone wants to stop and get a gift, it's now available at Hub & Cycle. Oh, that's cool. As well as we'll have online sales. Yeah. So that's cool. it. Any questions? What is your website for online sales? Just to promote um, The website, well, the online sales are, they come at different times, so okay. we send out um, we don't really have a website, we send out a link oh, okay. when they're live. But Hub & Cycle will carry our most popular items all year long. Right on Scranton? Uh, right, on, right on Scranton, yep. yep. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Thank I you. just have one question. It's oh, yes. It's probably not PV. Is, is this new outbuilding, is the city going to need to know anything about that? Or is it we may. Of, you know, we'll have to... Oh, so they're doing it on this. They'll be painted the same color. It's <coughs> next door down the street. It's not what it's going to be. So there was a shed there that we... Down. Okay. And uh, this will be the same color, so it should look. Yeah, we but are. We are looking for a permit, or we're going to pull a permit, so I'm sure. That's so important. That, right. Yeah. Discuss, but it will be the same color to match the other shed. All right. Thanks. Thank Good you. question. Thanks. Right. Permit, All right. Uh, so we're not going to have a reliance report, and we'll move on to Mr. Khan, who has some news for us. Yeah. I wanted to. Let the board know that we sold our refunding bonds today. The sale closed this afternoon or this morning. Uh, and it was approved this afternoon and we did very well, um, better than expected. So we had uh, a very good day. The Back in October, when we were initially talking about the bonds, the estimate at the time was about $230,000 of savings and about, uh, about 4% on a net present value basis. 
and then um, we had the election and some volatility in the bond market. When we came back in December, it was down to $130,000 and 2%. And we chose to still pass the resolution and hope the market calmed down. Um, and so when we went back today, we, um, we had a lot of interest in our bonds. We had eight total bidders and 47 total bids. So there's a lot of interest um, due to the credit worthiness of the district. <coughs> The, just the, the market itself, there's not a lot of supply out there, so people were very interested in purchasing these types of bonds. Um, so it and that's double the number of bidders we had last time. Just yeah, we had only four bidders last time um, we sold the bonds. So it was very good. Our, our total true interest cost at the end of the day is 1.8%, um, which is a total savings of $220,000, so almost what we were expecting back in October. Um, mm -hmm. If you would have told me this, few weeks ago we did you. Uh, for a present value savings of about 3.7%. So about as good as we could have expected to do um, in the market. Um, this, so the total savings for <coughs> both bond refundings together were $1.6 million um, and almost 10% in the present value savings. So I think uh, Good job. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's great. What's the grand total savings because we refinance bonds are in that? Well, the, the, the two, 2008 bonds that we refunded, right. at that plus this is 1.6 million total uh, of savings. Because this round was more like... That last round was like 1.3 something, this round was another 300,000. Uh, because we did the, the majority of it in the first right. refund, right. and then we came back, and because these bonds are um, further out, or they're, they're uh, closer in, than right. just the, the bond maturities the way they were, we have, we had a, a smaller potential savings for these bonds. And we have one more to go, is that right? No, no we're, we're done. We're done. done. That's we're it. Okay. All of the bonds that we can, um, everything else has is, is been That one's done. done. That won't even go on a strategic okay. plan because there's nothing else we can do. We're done. Okay. Kind of That's exciting. That's yeah. very good. Glad it went well. Okay. Uh, is that everything? Yes. Any right questions now. for Jay? All right, thank you. Uh, go on to President's report, just really briefly, um, talking about Dr. Sophie's evaluation. By now, all you guys should have received um, the link to the online survey, as well as notification from Shelly that um, her artifacts are posted on Boardbook. So you have everything you need to complete that evaluation, and we need those completed by February 6th at midnight, so 11.59, hopefully. And then for our... We're 11.58 even. Yeah, that would be great. That's all I'll be doing that evening. Um, then for our February 19th meeting in closed session, I will have everything tabulated and summarized by then, and we can review that together. Um, so it's the 6th is when I need it, and the 19th is when we'll review it. That's all I wanted to just highlight if anybody else had any. And you're talking about in closed session on Valentine's Day, correct? Yeah. Should that have any impact on the way we approach that? I might have treats for that or something. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, and is there a superintendent's report? No, I'm going to move right into strategic planning if okay. that's okay. Um, uh, strategic planning. One of the things that I would like, I'm going to give homework to the board, is I thank really you. thank you. you very much. Bye, Carly. I really would like everybody to help me in um, thinking of some people that could help us out with strategic planning, community members. It might be, we really need to have, make sure we have representation from everyone in the community. So we need young families, maybe that aren't in school, uh, young families that are in school, families that have been through our schools, maybe don't have kids anymore, um, non-users, uh, people that Anybody that wants to help on our strategic planning. If you can think of great people that you would like me to contact, please email me their names and preferably contact information if you have that. Um, the commitment's gonna be really about two half days. Um, uh, probably, and the, they'll have to occur in the evening, so two evenings of maybe three to four hours work. So if you could send that to me. The other thing, um, I didn't get real clear direction, so I'm just going to make my own decision on it, is I'm going to be bringing to you 
the mission and vision for Commons. Um, many people said, let's leave it alone, but I heard a couple people say, can we relook at it? So I'm going to bring them back, and we can at least say then we've reviewed the whole plan. So I'm going to start with that, because hopefully that'll be easy. <laughs> so that that's that for strategic planning. Okay. Anything else? On your superintendent? No. All right, so we are now ready to go into discussion items. Got a number of things to cover. The first item to cover is item 9A, which is the 2017-2018 school district calendar. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a couple of options to consider, which uh, <coughs> Dr. Sophie's going to take us through. Yes. Um, as you know, you approved a 17-18 school calendar last year. And the calendar that you approved last year was Proposal 3. I just want to point that out to you. Um, the majority of Lake County schools are on some kind of version of Proposal 3. Um, in December, we reached out to Dr. Holland at the high school and asked her for what they had decided on a final calendar, and they changed their calendar. And the calendar that they have now proposed is Proposal 1. That is, that's the calendar that they're planning on using next year. If you'll notice, there's a difference in the winter break especially. One of them, winter break starts the 18th of December. The other one, it starts the 25th of December. Um, so, you know, process-wise, we, we, we have a calendar committee. We have a union representative from each school and our administrative team and Shelly, and we sit and work through, well, what about this? What about this? We have to count the number of days. Um, and then the two union reps go back to their buildings and they get feedback from the teachers. Um, the feedback from the teachers I put in the board memo for you, but basically you need to know that um, proposal number one aligns with Lake Forest High School where many of our kids have children. Uh, proposal number three, like I said, aligns more with Lake County Schools. The issue for us is going to be, and it, there's an issue on both ends, is if we go with the recommended calendar, which is going to be Proposal 1, because it aligns with Lake Forest High School, we are going to have staff members and absenteeism, because there's going to be child care issues, um, because the majority of their kids are going to be out of school, at least a week's difference. Now, you may be asking if you think logically, sequentially, where it happened to Proposal 2? <laughs> proposal 2 was kind of a combination of these two calendars, and the staff didn't love that. So we just took it out, because it's hard enough just to make a decision between the two. So when you look at this, I'm bringing this to you as a board. We, we're asking for early approval on this this year, because starting February 1st, people start bombarding our office and saying, we need to know your schedule for next year. We're planning spring break. Mm -hmm. So um, we are recommending Proposal 1 um, with reservations because the staff really has a mixed feeling on Proposal 1. So I'm here to entertain questions and get your feedback because I will be asking you to approve Proposal 1 this evening. Which I'm inclined to do. I mean, what I'm hearing is that the staff is split and I imagine the community is very much in favor of a, an aligned calendar. So right, it's my thought on that. It's my thought, too, which is why we're recommending that, with reservation. Our, our breaks line up, for the most part, with Lake Forest High School on this. You know, the spring break, we really have gotten in a good routine with them. Um, I do, just so you know, I do meet with Shayla. I did meet with Shayla and shared our calendars. She gets feedback from us. She asks me questions. Ultimately, they make decisions on what they need to do. So it, they had, didn't do this without consultation. I heard feedback this last year that we had an institute day, Monday or Tuesday after um, New Year's, uh -huh. and the high school didn't. Right. And this would be aligned, one would align with that, they, we would both be having an institute right. day. And our teachers love that, by the way. A favorable response. So it gives that. proposal one actually gives families almost two and a half weeks, right? At the holidays. A little bit longer. But again, we're gonna need to 
really make sure we've got coverage because our teaching staff with children at home are a bit concerned about mm -hmm. the schedule. Is there a rhyme or reason that you, I think you've told me this before behind the early release schedule? There's a, there is a rhyme or reason for that. Um, we have it because that is a time, it backs up to faculty meetings. So it gives a longer amount of time for our teachers to meet and get really teaching and learning work done instead of just a pat meeting. Um, we used to have them on Mondays and that, again, we just didn't have the extended amount of time to work on that. So we compromised and that's why we're doing the Wednesdays tied in with faculty meetings because contractually teachers have to stay X amount of time for those. Anybody else have any other questions? So I'm going to read this as a, per, a motion for proposal one, if that's okay with them. Yes. <laughs> with the caveat that if Lake Forest High School changes again, we'll be back to discuss it, right? Exactly. Yeah. We're we're doing that now because they changed it. I see. We based it last year on their schedule. So. I see. Yeah. Okay. So um, I have a motion to approve the 2017-2018. Um, final school calendar that is listed as proposal one in, in your uh, board book as and as presented by the administration. So moved. Second. May I have a roll call please? Uh, Philip Hood. Yes. Susan Ryder. Yes. Mark Berry. Yes. John Rosen. Yes. Julie Gottschall. <coughs> yes. Okay, the motion is approved. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item 9B, the approval of a two-year agreement with Baker, Tilly, Virchow, mm -hmm. and Krauss. Finally. Finally, mm -hmm. they are our uh, auditor, and they've done the past two audits for us, I believe. And they've done a great job with that, and this has been reviewed by our legal counsel. Does anybody have any questions or need more details on that? All right, so I'm going to read a motion. Maybe we have the motion to approve a two-year agreement with Baker, Tilly, Virchow, and Krauss, LLP, as presented by the administration, and reviewed by our attorneys, Hodges, Louise, Eisenhammer, and Cole Nagel. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Philip Hood. Yes. Susan Ryder. Yes. Mark Berry. Yes. John Rosen. Yes. Julie Gottschall. Yes. Motion is approved. Uh, item 9C, 2017-2018 uh, student fees. Uh, this is an item, an item we spoke at about quite a bit on our January 10th meeting, uh, Committee of the Whole. And Dr. Sophie's going to present, uh, talk to us about several options to consider here. And I'm going to add a little bit of information to this also. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Jay may need to fill in any blanks. Um, we discussed that, uh, this at our January 10th count meeting. After Jay, Kevin, and I discussed fees at the last meeting, we're bringing you three options. The three options are increase some fees, which we talked about before, including a higher full day kindergarten fee, but then keep the bus fees free. That's number one. Two, same as op the option one, but with a $100 bus fee for each child that rides. We're against that because we think that that would change transportation and busing behavior. So we're coming in with three. Keep option one, change some of the fees, keep busing free, and add another category of safety slash arrival, dismissal, it's Kevin's idea that he brought up at the end of the last meeting, of $100 that all students would have to pay. And that helps us defer our costs of maintenance, tra traffic sa safety supervision, as well as stipends for teachers that are all out. It spreads it out mm -hmm. amongst that really all the responsibilities for all kids to get them here. Um, and we don't feel that that would change busing behavior. So that's the best option we could come up with that. I do need to update you on a situation that's going on. I will discuss this further at another meeting when there's more details. Um, in a local district of ours, there is a large group of parents that are organizing against kindergarten fees. And their legal counsel has informed the district that um, the only way to um, have a full day kindergarten is to, and, and charge tuition, is to have the afternoon more of a daycare situation. So they'd be having fluff and nap time and maybe a couple of specials that they normally wouldn't have. Because technically you're not supposed to charge for a curriculum type teaching and learning. Uh, I called Terry Hodges. 
Um, she said that she feels that she backs that legal opinion. Um, she said she believes, like I have said to you, that things are going to be changing this year as far as charging for kindergarten, which will leave us some options in a year to make some decisions because we could either go, just go to all half-day kindergarten, we could keep what we're doing and make the afternoon fluff, which I will go on record and say I'm totally against, but some parents may need it. Um, or we have full day kindergarten and don't charge. So there's implications for all three of those. Um, when we make decisions on what's best for kids, it's definitely best to have them all in school a full day. Our kindergarten, kindergarten common core mm -hmm. is hefty and to try to get it done in a half day without any other situations going on is hard. And then you have to add our kindergarten assessment and the days that teacher kids will be assessed on that. There's just not enough hours in the day. But there are many factors to this. Um, we're still coming in with the same recommendation of raising kindergarten fees this year, waiting to see how the environment plays out and making a good decision on kindergarten for next year. And what's the increase in the kindergarten fees for the year? What was it again, Jay? 150? 150 dollars, or six percent. Okay. Okay. And Jean, I, I know we talked last time about, and I believe you said that we wouldn't need to have a transportation fee this year. We could right. defer that to next year, and we talked about starting it sooner because we didn't want to have a big jump. Right. Right. Now. But then we later came up with the idea of, of the traffic, right, charging right. everybody, which may mitigate against a big jump. So I guess my question is not to introduce a fourth option, but um, you know, it was there thought given to increasing the fees for kindergarten, but still keeping all transportation free. I think that was option one. That's option one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We consider that, and we're not recommending that because what we heard loud and clear from board is everybody felt like there should be some kind of increase to make up for at least part of the increase we're going to be paying for transportation. Because we don't know what the increase for busing is going to be. I thought there were, I thought there was an option with just the busing increase that we're not entertaining that? Uh, that might, the busing increase, the first one is free, the second one is a hundred dollar bus fee for students. So. That's proposal okay. two. Okay. Just for the ones who arrived. But just for the riders. Right. Okay. 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 We tried to encompass all of your suggestions except for Phil's. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I'll go on record as saying that I am. I, I, Maybe it wasn't understood because the Lake Force leader didn't understand it either. So. Um, <laughs> and they did. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, that's, that was almost Trumpian. Uh, yeah, that's right. Sorry. It's an alternative fact. Right, so I'm living with alternative facts over here on the, um, on the left side of the anyway. um, Yeah, tune in. Yeah, watch. Um, I completely lost my train of thought. Now. No, I, I actually, I actually think I'm probably in favor, given where this originated, um, with the fee increase for um, kindergarten and holding, as your original recommendation was, for nothing on transportation. Because I actually think that, although I understand the new proposal that Kevin came up, it makes a lot of sense to me. It seems to me, just based upon the feedback I got this week, um, and some of it was favorable, like, gee, we've never paid before, we're one of the few districts that don't. Um, it seems like there's some more groundwork that needs to be laid as to why we would be charging. Um, and there could be some other alternatives that we might develop. So I'm actually, I think, in favor of nothing for now. Um, it, Except for kindergarten. Well, so, and I also so, I need to make one correction. We've only had free transportation for two years. Right. We we charged before that. How much was it before? It's been for four hundred dollars. So we had four a, years. Four, two fifty. From four years. The, time flies. You no, know, from two thousand through, and that's as far back as I go, all the way through twenty twelve thirteen. The fee was two hundred fifteen dollars for yeah, my months. first year. We were charging. And then for the past four years. 2013 14 through this last year, we had a, a bus fee holiday to try to encourage more kids to take the bus to alleviate congestion at the schools. And we were able to do that because we were sharing buses with Lake Forest. And 
got a very substantially below market deal on buses. And since the change in the high school schedule, our costs are, have gone up 30% um, this year and probably another 10% next year. So so we're just looking for ways to try to offset, offset some that a bit until we know exactly what it is. So is, is Kevin's option the option that you're recommending? Yes. Mm -hmm. We could call it option three or Kevin's option. If the, yes, well, he's in charge of everything. Well, so. I, 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 option one. <laughs> it's listed as option one, isn't it? No. Um, there's still it's option those, three. Would those monies go into the, right. Jay, would those monies go into the transportation fund? Yes. So we would we would potentially have a surplus there if we didn't spend those money. I see where you're confused, Susan. You're looking on. I'm looking at page 50. And it I, yeah, the very one. first part of, of number yeah. one, implement a new safety, safety track, tra traffic transition for hundred dollars for all students. But then on Gene's board memo, um, oh, it does say that that is option three. So I don't know where. Okay. We need I'm to be, we need to clarify memo. that yes. before we read the the, the motion. Okay, you can just read that. So so as I understand. Oh, that's right. I'm not. I'm not. Okay. I'm, I'm I can't walk with them. Just one thing. Yeah, it's very confusing with the empty. I want you to answer my question. Okay. So the money's go in. The, the extra hundred dollars are going to the transportation fund. Correct. And if unspent, we could carry that surplus forward. If one, if the money is not spent, right, it stays in the transportation fund. Because part of the transportation, uh, that education. Transportation, right? Okay. I mean, part of the reason we discussed the incremental fee was because we haven't been charging in the past and our, our costs are going to go up in the future and we may incur deficits because of that unless we do something with respect to generating more income or revenue right right yeah. we also at the time we had, um, started the fee holiday had a very significant transportation fund balance, fund balance. Right. It was, right. i think two that made it easier to percent of free right of annual expenditures and that's since come down and back into the normal range so we can't Girls. continue to deficit spend there. Right. right. Okay. Let me ask you one other question on feeding back to the kindergarten. How many uh, extended day kindergarten students do we have? Four full four classrooms and right? one half day. About so four eight. classrooms each have 19. 100, 100, 100 or kids, roughly 100 kids. Total. 19 times four, right? 75-ish. 19 okay. times four, so then a half day eight. class of I think 13. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go on record as saying I'm in favor of increasing the kindergarten fee and we had a lot of discussion about that last time that we believe we're below market with that and so that seemed like a reasonable and relatively mild increase. In terms of the transportation, um, I'm a, I, my understanding is that we really shouldn't defer some increase because we're going to have deficits. So the idea that there might be some solution, I thought, Jay, that you said, in future years, there really wouldn't be. There may not be. We don't right. know the significant right. Of the right. increase. Yeah. What ends so up happening is money is diverted from education fund into the right. transportation fund right. to pay for buses. So at some point, that's probably so going to be a big right. so. Although I still think we could not do it this year without going into a deficit, but then have perhaps a slightly larger cost next year. Which is what and I a bigger jump. Yeah, yeah a bigger, a bigger jump. jump. I, I but, think so. okay, but the jump would be, now it's spread over all the households if we go with that option, which I am in favor of doing. Bottom line, I'm in favor yeah. of having a, a universal class. Option three or Kevin's option. option. Yeah, I think, three. I think giving people the option to not yeah. is a bad idea. So the... Um, What's our what's our what's our what's our revenue going to be off of this? I mean, after you back out the people that are going to have to pay. Um, 90, 90, 000, 90, 000. 90, All right. Yeah. And just to be clear, the reason I'm in favor of that option is because it, it, I think it provides an incentive for more people to take the bus, which has been good for the tardiness. It, kind of, it probably will be closer to eighty with the portion of students who, yeah, so, who, so it, who, wave, who have fees. If we start with this, chances are, based upon what I recall, the, the prospective fees being, uh, we are going to probably have a jump again, um, a significant jump next year. Okay. Yeah. So, no, no. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so the yeah, that's the part that's not clear to me. I don't know that we have to do anything this year. We could just discuss all of it next year. And because it would be a universal charge, 
that's the way the board's trending, it really wouldn't be that much of an increase. When we talked about the big increase, it's when we were talking about charging only the busing students. So if we spread it out, I we think, might be able to defer it. And I, I think what we heard after talking to all of you and still not knowing the significance of the increases from Olson is that by charging $100, we're not changing behavior, and we truly have expenses for arrival and dismissal. Mm -hmm. So why not go ahead and, and charge the $100, then at least we're, we, because we don't know the significance of the increase, we've covered our bases. The increase this year that we've already seen, just due to the shift in shared versus non-shared buses, was about $80,000. So that's already a cost that we might cover this year that we're not charging for. Okay. okay. So if we charge full freight now, it wouldn't be two fifteen; it'd be like three hundred a, a kid, right? It would so be a bigger, some bigger number. It would be a bigger number than yeah. the cost of absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the fees, the fees, so none of the fees actually pay for all of the programs. Mm -hmm. It's just subsidizing it so that it lessens the burden. So the reason I can't give you an answer yeah. is because it depends on because how much money on we want to spend the subsidy. on everything else. We spend what, hundreds of thousands of dollars on busing every year. I mean, so, yeah, it's, this year it's about $500,000. Right. Yeah. 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 May I ask a couple of questions? So the, um, the current cost of monitoring the um, driveways and getting kids in and out of the school correctly and safely um, crossing guards, that doesn't come out of the transportation fund, does it? No, that comes out of the education fund, right. the general fund. But all 100 per kid would go into transportation, and is that permissible? Even if it's not spent on busing? And I'm trying to figure out if it's permissible to take the $100 from the kids who aren't going on the bus for a safety fee, mm -hmm put it into transportation and then pay the school monitors out of education. Do you see what I mean? We, we would actually be paying, trans, we'd be using it 100% for transportation for buses. Right, it's not yeah. like there'll be extra. That would mean that we would transfer less of the money out of education. Out of education. So it's a wash. And that's the money that we would spend on crossing I'm, guards. And, I mean, crossing guards come out of the, the operations and maintenance fund because that's where those guys are paid from. So okay. it's all kind of a big, so the, the reason I'm asking this is not because it, I mean, it's all fungible, it's money, right? right? But that it's the way we present this to the public, right? Because I can imagine, though I'm fully in favor of option three with $100 for everybody, I just need to understand how we articulate that to the kid who walks, you know, two blocks They're still down the street. To, to supervision outside, supervision inside. The, uh, they don't the incur, streets. right? So the walkers incur the the, the crossing, guess, guards, crossing guards and all the teaching staff that's outside or inside right. supervising. And if you have people coming in on the bus, they just they have this orderly procession out yeah. out of the bus. They still need to be supervised when their buses come in. They don't yeah. automatically go into the school sometimes. Okay, I, I, so. I'm wondering how unique this is because um, I, I'm just wondering how other other schools handle this same because we're not the only school with these kind of safety costs, right? right? Do other schools have this fee that's called? Actually, every school district's different, but a lot I shared with Jay, a lot of the districts um, actually hire police officers cross kids in the morning and they split costs with between the village and the school district oh. um, I I actually think that this way is uh, our police are awesome but th this is our own staff they know the kids I think it's the safest possible crossing we could ever have and then we have teachers outside which is true in any district at any school yeah so as far as the charging for it I, I don't I think can't tell you that most other districts. I mean, I think I'm not familiar with this type of a few other districts. Most districts charge a significant bus fee. Yeah, know, yeah. Oh, I was going to say it's, it's like 536 at Deerfield. It's 430 at Lake Forest 67. It's like they're trying to capture the actual cost. 495. They're trying to capture actual cost. I just want to make sure we don't end up in some kind of backlash, you know, because I can imagine. There being sort well, of a pushback about and that. Are those are those uni universal charges for every student, or just the the no. runners? No, well, 
Presumably not. Just just writers. Everybody writers. Those would be just bus Just writers. So I, I I love this idea. I think there are costs that get spread around to everybody, get spread to the taxpayers for their costs inherent in keeping kids safe, getting to school, even that are that we incur no matter what, we just don't see it the way we do as line item of you know, bus contract line item. But I just want to be prepared that people who have their children walk or they may not see it that way. And I just I just want to be able to articulate that here so that yeah. we're all singing from the same song. Well, right. The other thing is we may actually, once people are paying for it again, they may actually use the service. Right. Which, well, is, which is what I'm hoping. We, I, I, I'm hoping that too. I'm, I'm sure there's a strong, well, there probably is a very strong correlation between your tardy list and the drop-offs. Yeah. And I don't do that very often, but it's a real pain to drop off. I can see why they're tardy. I mean, you sit <laughs> there, depending on how the time, I mean, it takes a long time to work your way through that. I, I certainly well, hope Phil hasn't been receiving those letters. <laughs> Not, well, my kids take the bus every day, so <laughs> unless yeah. they're getting off the bus and running somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't be dirty. <laughs> I, don't, I'm, I don't mean to, I'm being devil's advocate. I like this option. I think it makes clear that there are costs inherent in every family's decision and that we need to spread that cost effectively. Well, and that, that's one component of it, and the tardy component is the other thing. If people have to pay a steep fee for the bus, a lot of people are going to opt out and they're going to drive agree. instead. So if people you know, have to pay the same amount no matter what, hopefully more people will make the decision made by my colleague, Mr. Hood, to just put the kids on well, the bus. Well, that we just got to get to work. Yeah. That's yeah. really yeah. it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> In a, one of Jean's super updates that she sends to the community, can summarize all this yeah. why we need to yeah. do this to I think, I think we should because I don't you know I don't want to overlook the the response that people might yeah. have to this. It's smart How to go in be not being ignorant or blind. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean when something's been free and now people have to pay we're going to yeah, get a response there's no doubt about it. I can't choose well, there's a, cost, like on the bus. There's a yeah. cost let's face it we yeah. have to cover the cost. Yeah. Right now we've been covering it for a number of right. a variety yeah. of different reasons so either we have the people who use the bus cover the cost or we have or we pay for it and share some of the incremental for safety yeah. purposes. I think if it's option three with them all we're all prepared to have, mm -hmm. have those conversations mm -hmm. with yeah. people. Mm -hmm. It, well, there's just no line item to point to. I just want to make sure people understand that. That, and further, I can't choose to put to put my kid on the bus. There is no bus in my in my route going to the oh, middle school. So why am I paying? You know, why am I paying? Because other people are making their kids tardy by not getting them to the to school. Well, like you, but so, your children still need to be crossed by a crossing guard. Yes. And, I they have to be supervised outside by the teachers. And Nate has to tell him to put his helmet on. I know, I know. <laughs> right. So I, I, I'm, I'm a fan of it. I think it makes logical, economic, freakonomic sense. You know, driving people to do what's lot, what's rational, behave rationally. But I, um, you know, I just anticipate I think we have that to work it, on the community. We, I think we really do. Okay. So I'm going to put forward a motion that talks about proposal number, option number three. And just to be clear, option number three is the same as option one, which means increase some fees, including a higher full day kindergarten fee, but keeps bus busing fees free, and adds another category of safety slash arrival and dismissal slash transportation fee of $100 to pay for our maintenance traffic supervision as well as the stipends for the teachers. $100 per student. Per $100 per student, yes. So is everybody clear with that? Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Yes. yes. All right. So I'm going to highlight this for myself for future reference and then read the motion to include option three. And I'm not going to read all those details when I say this. So may I have a motion to approve the 2017-2018 student fees as presented as option three by the administration? So, so moved. Second. Okay, roll call vote, please. Julie Godshaw, yes. Philip Hood? Yes. Susan Ryder? Yes. Mark Berry? Yes. John Rosen? Yes. Motion is approved. Okay. 
That was probably the most stickiest one, so we can move through these a little quicker. Now we go to building use fees for 2017, 2018. And in this case, the, the recommendation from the administration is to approve a slight increase for custodial fees as outlined in Mr. Kahn's memo in the board packet. And that really only was for uh, custodial fees and it meant a couple dollars an hour, if I recall. Right. Two bucks. Yeah. Just to reflect their wages. So it's not a significant change in, in the building use fees. Is there any questions or comments about that? Concerns, discussion? No. no. Do we require proof of insurance for groups on the web? Yes. We do. Did we? We did at the last meeting. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> just overwhelmed by the transportation. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to move to a motion. Anybody else? No. Okay, so we have a motion to approve in 2017 and 2018 building use fees as presented by the administration. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Susan Wright. Yes. Mark Barry. Yes. John Rose. Yes. Julie Gauchelli. Yes. Philip Hood. Yes. Motion. Motion is approved. All right. Uh, 9E. Uh, we have to discuss an intergovernmental agreement with the Lake Plus Police Department. Uh, the details of which were presented at the last uh, committee of the whole on January 10th. Uh, administration is asking for our approval. And um, there was a change. We had requested that we make that, that contract evergreen. Evergreen. So self-renewing. Yep. And um, were there any other questions or comments that needed to be raised? In regard to that contract? No. I would just like you to take note that um, the village is still working through with their attorney, so we will approve. It may, there may wind up being a situation where there might be a slight revision at some point, so but we can advise to go ahead and pass our, on our end. Okay, go ahead. All right, so I have a motion to approve the intergovernmental agreement with the Lake Bluff Police Department to grant access to security video surveillance as presented by the administration. So moved. Second. Roll call vote, please. Julie Gottschall, yes. Philip Hood? Yes. Susan Ryder? Yes. Mark Berry? Yes. John Rose? Yes. Uh, motion is approved. All right. So now we're moving on to 9F. Uh, we are talking about uh, the destruction of closed session uh, verbatim tapes. We talked about this in our closed session meeting prior to this. And I have a motion prepared for me to read very specific wording. Uh, according to board policy 2 colon 220, school board meeting procedure after 18 months have passed since being made, the audio recordings of a closed session meeting is destroyed, providing the board, board approved, one, its destruction, and two, minutes of the particular closed meeting. At this time, the board is permitted to approve the, discretion, the destruction of any audio recordings from closed session meetings between August 26, 2014 to June 16, 2015. That's all of them. That's all between those two points. So uh, may I have a motion to approve the destruction of closed session minutes of these verbatim tapes? So moved. Second. Uh, any questions or comments? Roll call vote, please. John Rosen. Yes. Julie Gottschall. Yes. Phil Penn. Yes. Susan Ryder. Yes. Mark Berry. Yes. Motion is approved. And uh, now we move similarly on to item 9G, release of closed session minutes. Again, some specific language here. Um, I, we need a motion that the Board of Education, having this date conducted its semi-annual review of its closed meeting minutes required by the Open Meetings Act, approve making public the minutes of its closed session held during the Board of Education meeting identified by the dates below. Uh, February 16th of 2016, March 8th of 2016, March 15th, 2016, April 12th, 2016, April 19th, 2016, May 24th, 2016, and June 14th of 2016. Further, needs to be moved that the following closed session meeting minutes be made public with redactions. November 17th, 2015, mm -hmm. January 26th, 2016, and August 23rd, 2016. And even furthermore, it needs to be moved that the following closed session meetings be found to continue confidentiality and not be released at this time. For February 23rd, 2016, September 13th, 2016, September 27th, 2016, and October 25th, 2016. So may I have a motion for all of that? <laughs> so moved. Second. Roll call vote, please. Susan Ryder. Yes. Mark Berry. Yes. John Rosen. Yes. Julie Gottschall. Yes. Philip Hood. Yes. 
Motion is approved. All right. Um, okay. Now we move to what is potentially the, the occupies the most space in our agenda, which uh, board policy first reads. Which I just want to give a big shout out and a figurative pat on the back to everybody involved in that process. This was 58 policies covering 131 pages, and I don't know how many hours of time you guys put into it, but <coughs> Julie and Lee and Susan and Gene and you guys all of our everybody, a lot of time and effort. Shelly. We really appreciate it. And then it was all summarized for anybody in the community who really wants to drill into this. There's a nice three or four or five page summary that highlights the changes um, uh, that are being recommended. Um, and we are not going to. You know, I'm not going to read every single uh, policy here, but I will mention that we we're talking about policies having to do with uh, school boarding in general, uh, operational services, general personnel, instruction, students, community relations, and there's some additional miscellaneous, three or four, two or three of those. So I would then turn to, is this, do I have a specific motion to read on this one too? You have to move that all the board policies are moved to a first read and then we'll, there's a discussion after that. So you need a motion first. Okay, so we have a motion to approve board policy for first read as presented by the administration. So moved. Second. Right, and would our <coughs> policy committee like to highlight anything from our first section, section two in the school board manual for school boarding. Any, either of you guys have any comments on section two and 3.40 and 3.50. They were all pretty basic, this section. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and just to take a step back in case anyone's interested, um, we do get updates from our legal counsel periodically. There's changes in the law and they recommend that we change our policy to reflect those changes. So a lot of this is some, items over which we don't have discretion. There are, of course, always things over which we do have discretion and we have discussion about that. I don't know that there's any big high level items here that would be controversial or that warrant much discussion, as I recall. I read them all very closely for our meeting. I confess I haven't read them again since. The one I did spot check though, Jean, and I wanted to ask you about this, was the having the EpiPens. I thought we were gonna have the policy say that we don't have them because we don't have them. I will we'll address question. that when we get to that area. Okay. But I we I know when we reviewed it, we can add it. Mm -hmm. But Kevin, you you had some comment on that one, or did we put in your comments? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. When we get to I it. have nothing before we get okay. to that. Okay. <laughs> All right. There there may be other things before we get to that. So okay. when we get to that section, um, the next section is operational okay. services. Any comments or Section questions on that? Our school board manual, and that is again also highlights, summarized, and a very helpful summary memo in your board packets. What about Section Five, General Personnel? Um, I do want to make a comment on that. Section Five is one I always run by Terry Hodges because of the fact that it's personnel, and there's a lot of um, really reaching implications. Um, it was also time for several of these policies to be updated, so they've all been updated and um, they're ready to go. So does anybody have questions in section five? And the next section is section six, community relations. We have actually, I'm wrong, section six is the instruction. So there were some Substantial changes in here only due to changes in law. Any questions on section six? That gets us to section 7.10 on students. Um, any questions on that one? Because we're getting to Julie's section. Administration of meds to students as such, section 7.270. So I believe that's the one that Julie's talking about, Kevin. They believe that, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Julie, but the question that you had on it was um, with regard to why it specifies something about EpiPen and not about... That was a question that I raised in the meeting. That wasn't the question I just raised now. That's something else. But if you could address that, I'd be interested to hear. So um, the reason for that is because of the fact that um, the insulin is actually naturally occurring in the, um, in the 
file in the system. And so that is actually covered under Section 504, and that would be covered under a different law. And so that is why it's not covered under, it's not considered a medication. So that's why it's not covered under this specific policy, because it's like naturally occurring in the body. Right, interesting. In most, yeah. In both. And what we took out of 2.70 was the OIP, I can't pronounce it. Opioid antagonist. Oh, OIP. Can't say it, I told you. Whatever he says. So that was all taken out because we don't have it. But what I believe that we came to consensus on as we were discussing it is that we were going to leave the FEPENS in because of the fact that we were going to seek those, we were going to potentially seek those continually from a doctor in the community. And there's a phrase at the end, the disclaimer, that says if we don't get it, that we will always continue to seek it. What we took out was what Kevin said, the other one. Because we're not going to have an opioid antagonist available in the district. But we are required to continually seek the FEPEN auto-injector in the district. We just have not found a doctor who's available to write the script for us. And so if we were to find that, then we would be good to go. Is that a hard thing to do? Yes. Apparently. We have nobody that's offered. You've got to remember, if you're a doctor, you're writing a prescription for students that are not your patients. I would imagine there's... Writing a blank check. So we have not had that yet. So I think that answers your question. It does answer the question. Just, you know, to the extent it's worth pointing out, we don't have FEPENS, so the policy might suggest that we do have FEPENS. But apparently there's nothing we can do about that. Well, we've got the disclaimer at the end. Right, there is a disclaimer. The next section is 7.8 on community relations. Questions on that one? Because I do want to talk for a minute on this last section. Okay, the last section. We had... Our board members were very concerned that we have a policy that really talks about staff behavior and communication with students outside of the school day through social media. I had a long talk with Terry Hodges. We were actually thinking about having an individual policy. Terry suggested that we make the ethics policy. She added to that, as well as the... Well, ethics policy is where she put in the additional wording. And what I did is I read her the notes from our policy meeting, and she made sure she covered it, I think, in the ethics. But I wanted to make sure that as board members we addressed your concerns. Because I know specifically you and Leanne really wanted to make sure we tighten up that language. So she did that. The other policies on here, the comp time, we asked for changes so we have more flexibility in administering it the way that we want to administer it as a district. And then finally, the harassment of students has to be reviewed every year. So that's why that's on there. Questions, comments, concerns? I think we were able to accomplish what you and Leanne had said. I was pleased with her suggestion because having an individual policy sometimes creates concerns. Okay, so we have Rich's in here because I know he read every single word. She did. She did. No, Rich. Rich. Oh, yeah. We have a first and a second already on this. So can we have a roll call vote, please? To approve the first reading. Yes, of course. Philip Hood. Yes. Susan Ryder. Yes. Mark Berry. Yes. John Rosen. Yes. Julie Gottschall. Yes. Motion is approved. All right. Personnel report item 9I. This month, in our personnel report, we report for January 24th that we're reporting on a leave of absence for Ryan Werhain, who is a learning behavior specialist at the middle school, effective January 12th. And we're bringing him in, correct? Yes. Bringing Ryan Werhain in, who is a learning behavior specialist at the middle school, effective January 12th, 2017. He'll be replacing Sean Rekcek and Kathy Driver. Any questions, comments, or concerns? So we have a motion to approve the January 24th, 2017 personnel report as presented by the administration. So moved. Second. Roll call vote, please. 
Um, Mark Berry. Yes. John Morosi. Yes. Julie Gottschall. Yes. Philip Hood. Yes. Susan Ryder. Yes. Motion is approved. Um, item 9J, our consent <coughs> agenda. This month our consent agenda includes the Treasurer's Report, the Impress Report, the Bills Report, the PCAR Report, as well as open session meeting minutes from December 13th, 2016, our Truth and Taxation meeting minutes, our December 13th, 2016, regular Board of Education meeting minutes, our... I'm sorry, my phone, I'm trying to turn it off. <laughs> our January 4th, 2017, Policy Review Committee meeting minutes, as well as our January 10th, 2017, Committee of the Whole meeting minutes. Uh, is there any item on the consent agenda that any of the board members would like to have pulled for more in-depth discussion? Not hearing any, I would like to hear a motion. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda for January 24th as presented by the administration? So moved. Second. Roll call vote, please. Philip Hood? Yes. Mark Berry? Yes. Susan Ryder? Yes. John Rose? Yes. Julie Gottschall? Yes. Uh, the motion is approved. Um, now we move on. We're done with discussion, so good. We're almost there. Uh, sorry, got lots of paper over here. Moving on to our FOIA requests, and this month we had two FOIA requests. One was from uh, the Chicago News Sun, uh, ongoing questions about our personnel situation, as well as one from the Lake County News Sun uh, regarding criteria for holding students in the district. Anything you guys want to add to any of that? No? Okay. And then, uh, I'll offer the opportunity if anybody in our massive audience would like to address the board. Not hearing anything. Sorry. I mean, I'm holding the box for the third thing. I've got to turn, I'm like pressing the button. The <laughs> so, the so I'm done with the top. Uh, any further comment by anybody on the board? Thanks again for all the policy work. Huge amount of work. Appreciate it. Huge Thank amount you. of work. Um, so at uh, huge, <laughs> big league. Big league. <laughs> they have a motion to adjourn at eight seventeen p.m. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Sorry. Right. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>